Good morning. Um, I think that, you know, like, my presentation today is basically focusing on the southern of Vietnam and the role of southern of Vietnam in global supply chain. Very interesting on the presentation of Marco, talking that Vietnam become a big winner, you know, during the challenging times that, you know, with China, with COVID, with everything. So I think that my presentation today is basically focusing on, on Vietnam and also the fundamental of Vietnam, um, but mainly focus on the Southern and the fundamental in the Southern. So in terms of my presentation is a first, the fundamental of the Southern, and the second that the global transshipment hub um, and how the Southern of Vietnam play the role in that uh, network. The third we'll be talking about of course, we're from real estate, so talking about the industrial and loaded real estate market performance, uh, you know, over, uh, you know, uh, the time of challenging and also the forecasting in the next couple of years. Uh, the last part will be looking for the vision for row. So I'm going to quickly about the first part. If we're looking into the fundamental of the southern of Vietnam, of course, Vietnam is GDP compared to uh, South Asia countries. GDP of Vietnam always then grow the highest. Um, and if we look at the southern of, eco uh, of economic regions, it contributes 30% into the GDP growth of the country. And if we're looking into the FDI flow into Vietnam, uh, where we see that, you know, well, FDI uh, flow into China still happening in the next couple of years, but we see also some shipping in the Asian country. One of that is Vietnam, and we see also in terms of FDI um, into Vietnam, particularly in the southern region, that processing and manufacturing and also real estate accumulated 70, 75%, and also the increases from 6 to 8% uh, in terms of FDI flow into the region. And in that, southern province accounted 44% uh, into the FDI uh, increase uh, for the whole country. Um, here, I think that it's very important to mention about the population in Vietnam. Uh, also, the population contribute to uh, the labor forces. Uh, so we see that, you know, Vietnam in the top three in terms of population. Um, Indonesia is still the biggest, but in terms of the ranking for the labor workforce, Vietnam is um, ranking the top two. So that also the very good fundamental. Uh, but also, if we look at the cost, like Marco said, uh, in terms of the cost in Vietnam, a lot of people before saying that, you know, Vietnam is basically a very cheap labor. Um, now, I don't say that. I think that it's not cheap, it's a reasonable. Uh, and I think that if to put in a perspective, the comparing with all the Asian countries, we see that Vietnam is quite competitive. So another fundamental, uh, very interesting to look at, that the middle class population um, we're comparing in the Southeast Asia, we see that Vietnam very rapidly in recent the middle class 10% per annum, highest in the Southeast Asia. We are, you know, um, and even Singapore and Malaysia, I think that uh, also in the top as well, but I think that Vietnam very stand now from that perspective. So, well, we have a good fundamental in the Southern, and now, what I'm talking about, the global transshipment hub, and what I mean by that, if we look at the total export-import values by country, we see Vietnam, it contributes on, in ranking on the second position after Singapore. And Singapore position differently, more in a hub for financial and loaded it, but Vietnam, how different is that? Vietnam is the second in terms of uh, import-export value. Uh, a pack contribute that we also um, a, a manufacturing base as well. And also domestic consumption rose in the next couple of years. We can see it's, it can forecast in uh, quite clearly. Uh, aside from, you know, like if we compare to other countries like Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, Philippines, uh, like Marco says, uh, I think that in my presentation today, a couple of views is quite aligned with Marco, a couple of views a little bit different. Um, but I think that uh, for this part, I think that Marco mentioned something. If we kind of bitching for, uh, in terms of talent or MNC, I think the Philippines and in Indonesia um, is, is not as competitive as, like Vietnam. I think that if we look at the geography of Philippines, um, I think that the country is very narrow and the infrastructure there, 
I think that for the government that if they would like to improve uh, for the infrastructure in Philippines, it's quite challenging. Um, it's hard to basically develop the integrated infrastructure network for horizontal and vertical, only vertical. Where I think that Indonesia, very largest population in the region, but um, the country comprised by um, many islands. So in terms of infrastructure and logistic perspective, it's also uh, occurs some challenges. Where Vietnam, well, horizontal, vertical, uh, there are some challenges for sure in terms of infrastructure at the moment. However, I think that there is a room for the government to improve. So now if we look at the total export uh, value by a key region, we see that the southern contributed largest uh, in terms of the total value uh, among other agent, region. Okay, so another figure I think that very uh, put in perspective when we look at the southern of Vietnam, uh, here I think that we, our team put in together some figures uh, that is very important to look at the revenue of loaded contract enterprise and operating in Vietnam in the past five years. And what the figure show us here is that in the past five years, in terms of loaded contract uh, through seaport only, the reason we don't put airport or uh, air cargo terminal because it contribute very minimal um, figures. And in the past five years, in terms of logistic contracts, in recent average from 16 to 18%. Of course, during the COVID time, it reduced a little, but there's some years also in re some period also in re 23%. But in forecasting in the next five years, uh, a lot of forecasts show in the figure from average in recent 14 to 16 percent in terms of logistic contract. And uh, especially if we look at the, the volume of good fruit at Southern of Seaport, in the past five years, we also see the significant increase average at 10 percent per annum. And until now, in terms of in 2020, it's reaching to 12.4 million uh, TEU already for the key port in the southern. Now, I think that is a very important this part that we mentioned in about how, how the southern of uh, port connect to the global uh, transshipment hub. Uh, Marco mentioned in, well, it's some long kind of connectivity to other uh, transshipment hub of the world. I agree with that. So I put some <laughs> data here, uh, which is uh, emphasize uh, what day, uh, how long, you know, from the, the southern uh, connect to farther region. But key thing is very important. I think that for us to remind uh, I think a few years ago, we was uh, launching the Vietnam um, report, which uh, mentioned in the, the, the golden position of, of Vietnam, which right in between of um, India, India Ocean and Pacific Ocean. So here you can see the similar that we enjoy the golden position for uh, sea transportation. And here, which is just if we look at how the the southern of Vietnam, which is just the red here, connect to you know the the east coast and the west coast, and also Europe and also Australia, and also within the Asia Pacific. So it's quite well connected. Uh, even a little bit far in some transshipment hub, but I put in here the map of the key global transshipment hub uh, that, you know, from the southern port of Vietnam connect. So here uh, we can mention in, and definitely the southern Vietnam port become also the transshipment hub network of the world. One thing is very important talking about uh, FTAs. Uh, well, Vietnam also signed a lot of FTA and try to <laughs> try to execute and also advertise that. Uh, we see it very interesting that where Vietnam, if you see that the Whitley Asian route from Kak Lai port here, that you know some country like China, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, those country are uh, Vietnam already signed the FTA with, and you see that the 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 frequency is happen more uh, from the you know the port of southern of Vietnam to other region. And also recently, we just signed the FTA with uh, Europe uh, in March 2020. And we expected to see more connecting from Vietnam to, to Europe as well. So now, this is very important to explain the role of the Southern. Uh, what emphasizing 
The southern of Vietnam also connect to the world we just mentioned earlier. But here, very important that we, the Indochina Transit Corridor, Vietnam play a very critical role. And I'm going to explain that at the moment. So if we look at the Cambodia at the moment, we see only one port is Sanok View. It's a very small port, general port. And from Sanok View and that side of Phnom Penh, if they would like to any import export activity, they have to go through the southern of Vietnam. Not many people really, um, really see that, you know, how challenging that this, uh, the uh, QL22 is a very busy, it's very arrow. And now at the moment, the government is also building the road there. And I'm going to talk about that at the moment. But the, the role of the Southern also of Vietnam play very important in terms of this corridor, although Vietnam could become uh, it's already become the, the hub, not only from Vietnam outside to the global, but also for the Indochine region. And at the moment, the tran transit corridor has been built. Uh, to put in some figure for you, the fact here, you can see that the distance is 1,300 kilometers. It's already connect from Vietnam to Cambodia, to um, Myanmar, and also uh, to Bangkok. And this corridor also allow uh, Vietnam in the future for cross-border e-commerce activities as well. So any activity from the, the uh, Cambodia side here, they have to go through. Uh, Import-export activity is very de dependent to the port in Vietnam. That's a key takeaway for this uh, slide. So now, uh, if we look at, uh, this is very important to look at the key port in the southern of Vietnam, and we see Gak Lai port uh, and then Cai uh, Mep port, two key port, is until 2021 is rich, um, you know, almost approximately is 8 million TEU. And if we look at, this is very interesting that it's just this quarter that, um, you know, the southern Vietnam is then among the past global port ranking. And Cai Mep port is in the top 11 port uh, ranking already. One thing is important that I think that at the moment, Gak uh, Lai Port is quite congested, and the government is also see that. I, uh, I also uh, heard that the government basically uh, in the future uh, that the Gak Lai Port will become the city port, and then all the transshipment hub uh, going to the Gai Map Port. Uh, would it just also now the government improve a lot infrastructure connectivity to to the the southern economic zone? But also aside from that, the government is planning to build the transshipment hub in Cung Dia, uh with investment total to six billion USD, and um, for the capacity of the port going to be ranging from about ten million TU. Um, here. I think that I uh, just mentioned about the Kaimet port is in ranked in, in 11 uh, global port system. Uh, this is very important. Uh, I'm not sure if you pay attention to this, but I think that one milestone is so important for the southern of Vietnam, the mega ship arrival in Vietnam in 2020. Mega ship with 214,000 DWT arrived in Kaimet port in last year. And actually, Vietnam start welcoming four total four mega ship uh, in the past eighteen months. Is that we see, you know, mega ship is uh, and it's showing the very good fundamental of our port is basically um, is is good fundamental for those kind of port more arriving to the country. And I think the government at the moment also would like to try to improve. Uh, and also create and develop infrastructure in Kai Map Port so that we can welcome more and more those kind of mega ship to uh, the southern of Vietnam. Well, now we look how Vietnam, uh, how the southern of Vietnam connect to the region, connect to the world. Now we look at the wooden connectivity of the region. Where are we? To put things in perspective, we put here all the key infrastructure, critical infrastructure, from, and we highlight the pink area here. What does it mean? The pink area here is a four keys cluster of supply chain, of logistics, of manufacturing of the southern region, 
how those four <laughs> key regions connect to the key port and then connect to the world. And we see the highlight of the green line here are connected to the KIMAP port. And what key takeaway for this slide is, I know a lot of information. However, one thing is I would like to emphasize all the infrastructure connect to the KIMAP port at the moment, two lands, two lands only. Um, you know, and that, that very key. And if now, if we look at the Kailat, Kailat port is also the, high, the highest TEU port in the southern, and this is the infrastructure connect to the port. And look, look at all the, the, the infrastructure, it's also two lands. And this is the situation. We have a little bit of situation, do we? <laughs> a little bit of situation connect to the port, and a little bit of situation at the airport. <laughs> we do have a situation. And I think that, um, so Vietnam, the role, the winner, all of that, that Mark already mentioned, and I think that the fundamental of the country and the region, I agree with Marco, is far away from the full potential because we need to improve this. And good news for you, the government is going to build the infrastructure. <laughs> and just to give you some idea, I think that is similar to China. The government built, uh, you know, Earth to complete the ring road tree, uh, and they start in 2023, that's for sure, and I think that we read a lot of news about that. Aside from that, the government going to, re to build the ring road four, and also the, the uh, completed the key in infrastructure uh, to, uh, you know, Kochi and, and to the Tainan area, and also here that the airport going to be completed, but we hope that, you know, uh, four runways, but we hope the, the, the hardware infrastructure going to be completed. And we hope that the government also improving the operation in terms of the airport and stuff like that, so that you know, we can reach to closer to our full potential. Um, and another good news for us to look at uh, from the um, a little bit concern, and now we look at uh, for what is the potential of the southern of Vietnam? Lucky for us, we had the reverse system. Because if we back to this, so much work needs to be done for the infrastructure to connect to the key port, and road need time to build, minimum five years, 10 years. Meantime, that the existing supply chain, road everywhere, motorbike together with container, but we have the reverse system, <laughs> which I think that is something we can spend uh well the in terms of the uh, the um, investment the government planning to push for infrastructure that for sure but we also know highway like I mentioned like the government plan to spend 5.8 percent of the gdp to improve the infrastructure um, but it need time to complete and compensation so now if we look at the river improvement, it might take us shorter time to get there and resolve the existing issues. Uh, and to, to put something to think in the perspective that this is the network in terms of the, uh, the river network that we can improve, uh, you know, for the short term period within the southern region so that we can improve the logistic efficiencies and also support for the supply chain uh, to also for more uh, uh, efficient operation and save some costs as well. Okay, so now I'm talking to the third part of my presentation and look at the market performance. Uh, well, FDI, yes, uh, apart from that, in Vietnam enjoy the winning uh, flow, a lot of FDI to the country. And particularly what we look at is that for major of manufacturing flow into Vietnam, top Taiwan, Korean, Japan, and now we have Europe, Lego. <laughs> so we see uh, the FDA actually start, uh, you know, uh, effect between Vietnam and, and Europe, and we see that Lego is a, one of the very large uh, European manufacturers is start moving to uh, put in the operation in Vietnam. This is very important for us to look at where the existing Quinby, uh, the key manufacturing hub of the southern, and we circle here. You see some light in here? Uh, <laughs> that's the data point that we put in the key 
um, manufacturing the big one, the queen bee. Uh, where is the lighter? Is where the most of the queen bee uh, at the moment located. So the key point for us here to look at not the lighting, but uh, the point we like to emphasize here is the southern of Vietnam already well established the supply chain and this is a most mature supply chain establishment amongst other region. Um, and if we look at the performance uh, for the industrial park performance and ready build factory performance, ready build warehouse performance, I think the performance very high at the moment in terms of the occupancy uh, rate. Um, only Barry Vong Tao, you pay attention here, I would like to clarify that data point a bit. In terms of ready build factory, usually right now is the immediate need for a lot of, um, uh, you know, like uh, vendors uh, that is pensioned locally and also for uh, the vendor following to the Queen Bee to the country. Um, we see that the Bari Vong Tao is the ready build factory performance is quite low, um, where the warehouse is quite high. Uh, so there's explanation for that. In terms of Bari Vong Tao, it's basically a key uh, supply for ready build factories from Sona DZ. And actually, they hasn't they built a very big there, but it hasn't completed the facility. Uh, but also, the ready built warehouse in Barry Vong Tao is basically more in the Gracie building and near the port, um, so that you know the occupancy there is quite high. But aside from that, we see Bin Dương, and you see the Bin Dương is very uh, majority supply a uh, Gracie uh, warehouse facility, and also Dong Nai is receive facilities where the opportunity for Southern is quite large in terms of increase of uh, the import export activity. And uh, yes, talking about the land, the, the land price, uh, IP industrial park uh, land price performance, of course, it has been increased in the past couple of years uh, significantly. Um, and like Marco just mentioned that, uh, well, in the past couple of years that the uh, the land price has been increased so, so much, so significant in some location, especially to connect to key infrastructure of the region. Uh, so we see some, to put in, in some perspective, some key area, the land price could be $200 per square meter uh, for the industrial land. So if we look at the, the supply role uh, for all asset class from industrial and ready build factory uh, and also ready build warehouse, uh, we see from 2025, a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, investor, developer, they have acquired land and they go in to develop the facility. So we see from 2025 onwards, it's basically impressive supply role for all asset class uh, of industrial and logistics. This is very in, in, interesting uh, that we decided to put this together uh, where at the moment we see um, you know, that Vietnam is at the moment of transformation, the economy is transformation, going to globalization. So many global companies, they, especially in, in the industrial and logistics, they basically expand their footprint in Vietnam. But also in the meantime, we see a lot of local companies also expand their um, their operation and also expand their um, uh, their business uh, to the global standard. So I think that if we look at the whole market, uh, it's very important to look at what the difference is. Oh, we see a lot of developer, a lot of um, a lot of investor um, investing in this this industrial loaded. Everybody love industrial loaded. I haven't met many more. Uh, industrial expert ever uh, in the past four years, <laughs> so it seems like this uh, this this is also has become a very hot hot asset class, um, and that's very easy to understand, uh, you know, from the investor and also developer standpoint. Here, I think that we put uh, in term up uh, very important to basically we see a lot of Vietnamese local developers also participate into develop uh, you know, the, the ready build facilities. But also we see the financial funds uh, who in the, in, the, in the middle column invested in the you know, international logistics and, and, uh, and industrial developer. One thing is uh, today that uh, KCN also su uh, supporting us and why KCN into a column here. 
like I mentioned, uh, in the in the in the right part here, there are a lot of uh, international uh, developers uh, which um, you know basically invested by the middle column financial funds. Uh, but I think that's also fair uh, when we see uh, KCN coming out in the last 18 months and the way that they operate, the way they compliance, the way that they also um, develop the product is actually up to the global standard. Uh, so I think that it's quite important to understand in the different of developers and also the different of who uh, are the investor looking into investing in uh, this market. And to uh, emphasize my point, uh, it seems like <laughs> so KZN has been acquiring a lot of uh, a lot of land in the very key location. Um, and we see that it, this is the uh, southern industrial uh, cluster uh, future supply and in all the circle that where all the ready built facilities uh, go into a uh, supply to the market in the next couple of years. So coming to the final part of my presentation talking about the vision for role. So I think that it's very important to look at the supply and demand, what the difference. So I, I see a lot of uh, um, international developers, they go into develop that their facility, that hybrid, uh, meaning the dual function, uh, which means that that facility could be rent for the, the warehousing or also for the factory. So we see a couple of development that they have the hybrid function, uh, quite clever in the way that they design. And also a lot of um, development aimed to sustainability. And I think that a lot, and, and that push from the user, uh, from the the factory, and also from the international um, MNCs um, that they into uh, industrial as well. Um, they know, you know, industrial is also very mindful about how it uh, could impact to the environment. So we can see that is is a big reason of a sustainability uh, from the fund, the developers, and also the end user. Manchester Tory, uh, basically for a lot of development closer to the city center uh, and key infrastructure where the land is so expensive and limited land bank. So we can see that in order to make the investment uh, return uh, well, so the developer have to build a multi story and integrated model. Uh, especially we see that a lot of uh, developer, they start, you know, develop the product with uh, not only just serving for the supply chain, but also service at the service to, uh, you know, to their client and also to the people come and work and live in around in that industrial and logistic part. Temperature control, what we see, uh, Marco is right. I mean that when the disruptive supply chain, there is a short in, in the short term that high demand for the warehousing, the general warehousing, and also for temperature control. So now, if we look at the demand, we see that in terms of demand for industrial loaded is the scale, the, 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 the scale is getting larger. And before, uh, I think that also a lot of, uh, from the occupy side, we can see that they're also focusing on the specification, good facility up to, you know, like international standard as well, aside from the location. Uh, and they also uh, having the sustainability uh, concern as well uh, for the, the, the real estate that they're choosing. Um, now, I think that uh, if we look at the vision for Rho, uh, it's very important to put things in perspective. Uh, this is the figures that we look at all the global ports in the world. And at the moment, what is the TEU of uh, capacity of those ports and how, you know, it, and look at the comparison with the warehouse market. What a figure is at the moment for Ho Chi Minh port, Minh Cat Lai and, and other port within Ho Chi Minh Raider, we see that around 72 uh, million two, where the, the warehousing is 4.2 million square meter and performing at the moment is 90%. Uh, similar to other region, of course, we're not saying, okay, uh, it's something equivalent here, but it's just to put in that, you know, be, between the import export activities, uh, the capacity of the ports, and how the warehouse component support for that. And this is some figure that's showing uh, quite interesting for us to look at. And so what Vietnam expected in the next uh, five years is that uh, we see that focus volume in terms of the southern seaport 
uh, increased 12% per annum. And like I mentioned, it expected to uh, roll from uh, 2025 to 21, reach to 21 million TEU almost. And then uh, 2030 onwards, it's reached to 38 million TEU, which is <laughs> equivalent to Singapore. So there's a potential for the warehouse as well to roll when the market reached to that uh, figures. Um, and I think that that also, uh, a lot of reports that we read, uh, we see that the, uh, the, the huge rolls in terms of the import export volume from the southern of Vietnam. Um, conclusion to our presentation, we think that Vietnam will play critical roles in global transshipment hub. Uh, that's very important. And also connecting uh, very well with the global supply chains. And I think that, uh, like Marco said, and I agree with that, so bring my presentation to an end, uh, which I'm going to read here. Uh, <laughs> it's crucial that the government invest more in terms of education and training to roll the skilled labor because it's going to localization very quickly and it happened very fast. And I think it's also very important to enhance the domestic manufacturing capacity to allow the country uh, for, the, uh, for the healthy economic growth in the future. Thank you very much for your listening. And yeah, so now we move to the Q&A.